Hey, what's up YouTube? What's going on? Back with another video today. And with today's new video, what we're gonna be doing is a research review. Now we haven't done one of these in a little while and I wanted to kind of bring this back because uh, I stumbled upon an interesting research article that I wanted to share with you guys and just kind of give my thoughts with regards to it because it's something that actually interests me and I think it'll interest you guys as well. So I actually came across this research study upon sciencedaily.com. So for those of you guys that don't know what sciencedaily.com is, it's actually just a resource that publishes a lot of the more notable research articles that get a lot more traction or are a lot more kind of interesting per se. And it essentially just kind of summarizes a lot of the articles or a lot of the research studies that they kind of highlight. And so I was actually just upon the website the other day and I was just kind of browsing through it and I kind of stumbled upon this research article, read their article or their summarization of it and then I just kind of ended up getting the article myself and now I've kind of just went through it and I wanted to kind of just do a research review of it. So that's what we're gonna be doing with today's new video. So the title of this research article is High Doses of Anti-Inflammatory Drugs Compromise Muscle Strength in Hypertrophic Adaptations to, re to Resistance Training in Young Adults. So. What essentially the researchers were looking at is to determine if a high dosage of anti-inflammatory drugs over a period of eight weeks had a negative effect on muscular strength and muscular growth. And so what they did was they recruited individuals between the ages of 18 and 35 years old, so young adults, both males and females who are recreationally active, and they randomized them to one of two groups. So one group being a group that consumed 1200 milligrams of ibuprofen on a daily basis and the other group which consumed 80 milligrams of aspirin on a daily basis over an eight week training period. And so there were 16 people in the IB, uh, sorry, 15 people in the ibuprofen group and 16 people in the aspirin group. Now all participants performed resistance training exercises of the quadriceps over the eight weeks of training and the researchers used MRI images of the quadriceps to assess increases in muscle volume. They also used isokinetic strength tests of the quadriceps to, to assess muscular strength, and they also took muscle biopsies to assess gene expression and various molecules of protein synthesis that may indicate protein synthesis. Now, the important thing of what the researchers found was that in the aspirin group and compared to the ibuprofen group, there was almost double the increase in muscle volume over the eight weeks of training in that aspirin group with individuals taking 80 milligrams of aspirin compared to the ibuprofen group of taking 1200 milligrams. The same trend also followed for muscular strength. There was greater increases in muscular strength for the most part in the aspirin group when compared to the ibuprofen group. And then finally, when it came to gene expression and looking at various molecules of inflammation, what they found was that there was a significant increase or upregulation of IL-6 in that aspirin group and there was actually a downregulation of IL-6 in the ibuprofen group which is indicating that ibupro or which is indicating that the ibuprofen is having some inhibitory effect of the production of IL-6 and then with the aspirin group we don't see that inhibition or as much of it so what this may indicate is now that there's this less production of IL-6 this is essentially could explain why there's that increase in muscle volume and muscular strength in that low dosage of aspirin when compared to that high doses of ibuprofen. And the reason being is because IL-6 may play an important role in muscle repair and regeneration. So right there and then we see that ibuprofen is having a negative effect on muscular strength and also an increase in muscular volume and muscular growth. And so the important kind of takeaway from the studies here is that we see that a high dosage of ibuprofen is playing a negative effect in muscle, muscle growth. So now this is really interesting to me because a lot of people on a daily basis are consuming high dosages of anti-inflammatory drugs over a long period of time to maybe account for trying to prevent headaches, migraines, maybe reduce inflammation or the onset of pain or maybe they're dealing with a lot of pain. And right here we see that high dosages of these drugs over a long period of time can have an effect on muscular strength and muscular growth potentially. So one important thing that I do want to kind of mention and what might be confusing for you guys is, so now I just wanted to clarify one thing and you're probably wondering why the researchers used aspirin, a low dosage of aspirin, and why they didn't use a low dosage of ibuprofen to specifically compare to that high dose of ibuprofen. The reason being is because aspirin essentially undergoes the first pass effects in the gut and the liver. And so its chemical structure is a little bit different than ibuprofen and how it's consumed orally 
but essentially it kind of limits or kind of negates any effects that it has on the systemic circulation. And so we can rule out any kind of anti-platelet effects that aspirin may have or any kind of negative effects from those anti-platelet effects. And we can specifically just kind of focus on the cyclooxygenase enzyme specifically as a reason why we may see this reduced muscle growth or muscular strength because that cyclooxygenase enzyme may be inhibited specifically at the muscle. So that's kind of the reasoning for that and what the researchers stated. And that's kind of based on previous research as well. So one limitation of the study, and this is what the researchers stated as well, is that they didn't include a control group over the eight weeks. Now, including a control group would give this study more validity, in my opinion, and it would kind of give us a better idea of if actually the anti-inflammatory drugs are actually specifically having an effect. But anyways, we did see the effect here and there wasn't a control group, which is a limitation, but nevertheless, wanted to kind of share this research article with you and the study because I find it personally interesting because a lot of people tend to take a lot of anti-inflammatory drugs on a daily basis to negate pain or to prevent pain or to reduce inflammation or to maybe help with maybe headaches that they have or whatever the case may be. And with this, we specifically see that high dosages over a long period of time, over a period of eight weeks, is having a negative effect on muscle growth and muscular strength. Now, that's this research review for this video, guys. And I would just love to hear your thoughts and opinions regarding to this. What do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy this? Did you find this interesting? Did you learn something? And also I'll post a link to the research article below where you guys can specifically read up for yourself. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day. And until next time, take care.